Three political heavyweights are accused of funding a state Senate campaign for a ghost candidate, a woman who had no intention of winning the race, just sabotaging an opponent. All right, a ghost candidate runs for office, but not to win. They qualify for the election and then get their name on the ballot, but they only do it to siphon votes away and then swing the election. It reportedly happened right here close to home. Fox 35's Dave Puglisi joins us live from outside the Seminole County Jail in Sanford. So, Dave, one of the men accused in the plot is already behind bars. Yeah, only one of the three that have been charged are, is behind bars, and we're checking to see if James Fogel's song will be able to post bond today. The other two still have to turn themselves in for an act that some believe was to try to sway the state Senate District 9 election. This is James Fogel's son being taken into custody back in 2019 for political grand theft. He was accused of taking $20,000 from a political action committee involved in the Orange County Sheriff's race. He accepted a plea deal which granted him probation. Today, he has a new mugshot, this time because the FDLE believes he illegally funded Justine Iannotti's ghost campaign for State Senate District 9, representing Seminole County. That really was a strategy, it seems, that either Republicans or outside groups that were favoring Republicans decided to try to use to influence the state Senate races. Political science professor Aubrey Jewett saw this strategy deployed in at least three Senate races across the state. Iannotti's campaign was believed to be an attempt to help Republican candidate Jason Brodeur. The FDLE began an investigation into her candidacy to protect the integrity of our elections. What they found was evidence to conclude Iannotti illegally accepted a $1,200 check from Fogelsung to, in support of her candidacy. They also believe Iannotti and Fogelson falsely used names of others to hide campaign donations. They didn't really want to run, but they allowed their names to be put on the ballot. And then hundreds of thousands of dollars were spent supporting them, acting as if they were the real liberal or progressive in the race. Also charged in this case is Ben Paris, who's the head of the Seminole County GOP. He's accused of making a donation using someone else's name. We knocked on his door for comment, but no one answered. Iannotti was charged with six counts, including one felony. Fogelson, five counts, including three felonies, and Paris, the one misdemeanor. In the end, Brodor won the election by over 7,600 votes. Even if Iannotti's nearly 6,000 votes went to the Democratic candidate, he'd still have won. Certainly, Democrats will be on the lookout for this kind of activity in upcoming elections, but I suspect Republicans will as, as well. Now, the FDLE and the state attorney both issued statements on these charges saying that they will hold anyone accountable who tries to undermine our elections. In Sanford, Dave Puglisi, Fox 35 News. Dave